Am I ever going to stop talking about rice changers? Find out here in episode 66 of the Doopy Doo Talk Through of Sheeran the Wanderer. Hey there, I'm Doofy. I'm getting close to the end of the easiest run through Mount Virginus ever. <laughs> Although, I am close to starving to death, so I do have to be careful about these low poly dancers. I think I should be able to maneuver. Ah, that was dumb. I should have walked up and then down. That would have made a lot more sense. All right, I did save a scroll of light. Let us see where the stairs are. Look at all of these armbands I have. <laughs> Most important, obviously, is the armband of sight. But I also have a recovery armband and a bunch of worthless armbands. Oh, thanks to my armband of sight, I can see this death angel approacheth. <laughs> Uh, but they really can't surprise me. This run is so easy. I can't believe it. I've got tons of Kyra presses left. I do have to make it all the way across the floor, though. So, that will take some time. Don't get your hunger clock too high or your fullness too low, however you say that. <laughs> uh, I am actually working hard to put some challenge into this run. Because it is so easy, I I don't know if this really can count as a rite of passage. We'll see. Do things seem strangely empty to you, Pants Weasel? Where did everybody go? <laughs> oh, I know. They're watching Black Loopers run through Phase Final Puzzle. Honestly, if I was you, if you don't know about it already, I would definitely go to Black Loopers' channel right now and watch that Phase Final Puzzle run. It is a classy, classy run. Not only does he never use a strengthening jar, which is very difficult. I've only done that one time. He also does not use an armband of sight, which I have never done. The one time I beat Base Final Puzzle without a strengthening jar, I had an armband of sight. Uh, I didn't have a powerful weapon. I had like a katana plus seven, but my shield was pretty good. So that run is very educational. And it's just fun to watch. Right around our uh, 1 hour and 25 minutes, I believe, he has a hilarious fight with the Skull Wraith. It just <laughs> everything goes wrong like four or five times in a row. I was just laughing out loud watching that. It's always weird watching other people play Sheer in the Wanderer because uh, their style is different. Black Looper has more of a, I would say, a traditional style. He throws Guitons. He's fairly conservative with his items. He does not, though. He does not check traps as much as I do. Once I get, I start out kind of wild and crazy in Phase Final Puzzle, and I do really stupid things, and I don't really ID items. I just use them to ID them. You could, if you take time, you can really price check carefully, and I just, I don't have the patience for that. But later on, I become the exact opposite. I become some kind of like obsessive compulsive trap freak. I check every single trap because I'm, I'm like, Doofy, you've been playing for like two or three hours. Wouldn't it suck if you stepped on a trap right now and it all ended? You don't have, I just don't have the time to keep playing over and over. So I can tell you right away, when I finally have a winning phase final puzzle run, a, it's probably not going to be as impressive as Black Loopers. I'm probably going to do it in the typical way. <laughs> uh, you know, use a strengthening jar and get a ridiculously overpowered sword and shield. And uh, B, I am going to be checking every space for traps once I get floor probably 50 or 60, if not sooner. Because I'll be like, oh my gosh, if I die, <laughs> I'm going to have to record like 20 or 30 more episodes. That is way too much work. So laziness will prevail. <laughs> uh, I had no problems getting through Ravine of the Dead. <laughs> Let me just heal here for a sec. It's important to put on your hide shield, obviously, while you're speed healing. <laughs> so you don't use up your hunger, especially like me, when you have no rice boss left. Oh, that's another thing I noticed. Um, Black Looper is way more comfortable playing the game. Oh my gosh. Death Metal... Okay, that, you're just being a dick now. That was a dick move. You saw I was leaving, all right? And you're like, oh, right before you go, <laughs> let me knock your sword out of your hand. Gosh. 
All right, I'm gonna have to pimp slap you for that. Oh wait, th what is it? Halitosis Rex, I'm breathing your face. <laughs> All right, now he can't do it. Um, Black Libra is way, way more comfortable playing the game with a small number of rice balls. Maybe he, he knows, maybe he, he can answer this. If you play with a small number of rice balls, does the game automatically correct and give you rice balls? Because I have gone through maybe like 10 or 12 floors on phase final puzzle sometimes and never found a rice ball or an enemy that would drop a rice ball. So I am super paranoid about that. Usually if I see a rice changer, I load up. <laughs> I'm willing to sacrifice items to get a few more rice balls just so I don't have to worry about it. Oh, Doobie, don't die on this easy run. Uh, so that is a difference I noticed. And watching it, I started to think, you know, Doofy, why why don't you like throwing Guitans? Because uh, you can see in that run how powerful technique that is in Phase Final Puzzle, especially early when you have enemies that are pretty powerful, like Burly Smurfs. And I was thinking, why don't you do that, Doofy? And then I realized as I was watching the run, it's a combination of laziness and kind of uh, straining my sense of my suspension, I guess, of disbelief to the breaking point. I'm willing to accept Roid Kitties that can throw you hundreds of feet and you land fine, and magical shields that keep you full, and strange creatures that transform matter into rice, <laughs> and flying through walls, and all sorts of ridiculous things in this game. But for some reason, the idea that you... I can't pick up this money unless I put it with my other money, but I can pick it up if I trade it with something else I'm holding, it's just like that magical money system, I, I can't find a way to justify it. I think that's why I do it. It just destroys the sense of fantasy for me to uh, swap out guidance like that. But I would encourage you if you haven't played a lot of Sheeran or you're starting Phase Final Puzzle to, to try both styles, see what you like. Because uh, different people like different things. Some people like a more wild and crazy sort of speedrunning phase final puzzle style. And it depends on mood, of course. And some people like a much more methodical sort of traditional uh, ID every item, price check everything, check for traps. And everyone has a different mix of those things. So it's really cool to actually see someone. In the West, there aren't a lot of people that play Sheeran, so I've had to pl watch Japanese players. And Japanese players are just like robots. It's like you can't learn anything because it's like watching a robot play. They're so fast. <laughs> oh, so, oh my gosh, another dick move. All right, I was just about to go up the stairs and you had to knock me over, sir. That was very disrespectful. I am going to, if I use the postpone, I'm standing on it. Oh, doofy. Now <laughs> I blocked my way to my jar. I don't even know what jar that is. Could be something important. Let's see. I am gonna have to halitosis Rex this rhinodillo. And now <laughs> I have to do it again. Look at look at how many charges you're wasting, sir. Because of your dickishness. Oh, well, it was just a jar of hiding. I'm gonna stick you in a jar. You can think about what you've done. How does it feel now? How's it feel now, huh? Yeah, it doesn't feel very good. I was about to let you live. I think I'm still gonna let you live because I uh, don't wanna waste all my items. But I'm a, uh, oh gosh, I can't, I can't risk it happening again. Ah, uh, I guess I'll knock him back one more time. Roid Kitty sleeping peacefully the whole time. See, see what a nice monster Roid Kitty is. You should be more like him, Rhino Dillo. But, yeah, I'm sorry. As you can see, I have a lot of imaginary conversations. And I think because I roleplay a lot, <laughs> um, somehow swapping out Guitans kind of destroys the sense of fantasy for me. So that's why I don't do it. Uh, if you want to incorporate that into your playstyle, please go right ahead. I do not have any less respect for someone that decides to throw Guitans. And some people like Lena do kind of a compromise, you know, I think she only steps on top of Guitans and throws them. That makes sense, you know, of course you should be able to pick up things off the ground, but I don't even do that because I love money so much, I think. <laughs> I 
and I can't rationalize why money would do a perfect amount of damage. That's another thing. It makes it feel too much like a board game or something. You know, the rules are just kind of arbitrary once you start using or throwing guidance. I don't know. My, my brain is kind of weird. I You'll see later. I'm going to play kind of a goofy version of Phase Final Puzzle in this talk through because I'm just going to try to win as soon as possible. But I think... Sometime during the talk through as kind of a side episode, I'll show you how I actually play on my god cart. I play with some really bizarre rules in Phase Final Puzzle because I kind of am training myself for something else. Uh, but I think that's going to be a while. This run, I'm just going to pain chair this guy, I think. One thing you can notice though is that the number of enemies on these later floors is actually higher. So remember the earlier floors when I used the scroll of light? There really weren't a ton of enemies wandering around. On these floors, immediately, there are probably, I don't know, eight or nine enemies. I don't know the exact number, but definitely more than usual. But since I have an armband of sight, <laughs> this will be good practice for phase final puzzle. Oh, and probably, I don't know for sure. I certainly have beat in phase final puzzle many times without an armband of sight, but I'm guessing Probability wise, <laughs> that uh, the first run I have in Phase Final Puzzle that's really easy, I'm either gonna have a happy armband or an armband of sight because those make a run in Phase Final Puzzle super, super easy, especially if you get the happy armband early or if you're able to uh, do some kind of wacky experience gaining technique like um, Black Looper leveled up the mammal in the beginning. That makes the beginning of Phase Final Puzzle a lot easier. Although I'm, I mean, of course, he is clearly skilled enough to make it through the early levels. That just kind of saved him some time. All right, I made it to the room with the stairs, but I see a rice ball over there. <laughs> it is so tempting to kill these enemies and go for that rice ball. Then I wouldn't have to worry. I'm 35 fullness. I only need to make it one more floor, but... Sometimes things happen, you know, you fall down a pitfall trap. It'd really suck to die of hunger. I have enough items. I got a doppelganger staff to kill all these guys. There's a couple enemies approaching though. It would take several items. But I just need to make it one more floor. I could do it. Ah, oh, decisions, decisions. Do I go for the rice ball? <laughs> um... Ah, oh, bless of scroll. Yeah, I wouldn't really do anything. And then the dragon's gonna breathe fire. Death Angel's right next to me. What if I miss? Yeah, I'm just gonna go. All right, final floor. Let's see, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten enemies immediately. So yeah, definitely more than the early floors. I remember the first few floors on your way to Table Mountain. I think it's like three or four enemies sometimes. <laughs> I think in Time Attack. I alluded to this before. I think in time attack, more enemies spawn because it seems difficult somehow. Uh, it seems like more often than not, you spawn in a room with like three or four enemies. So they probably added a couple more, which I like a lot. All right, let's watch and see where the stairs are. Stairs are in the bottom left. Do I want to go for all the loot? I... I'm thinking something. I'm about to make a decision. And, um. Let's see. Yeah, there's almost no way I can die here unless I step on a pitfall trap. <laughs> um, I'm about to make a decision that I thought might upset some people, but. Thanks to Black Looper saving the day. <laughs> it's not really gonna upset you that much. I'll, I'll say it. After I get through this floor. Assuming something horrible doesn't happen. Really, it would take a moronic turn of colossal proportions for me to mess this up at this point. <laughs> uh, after watching that face final puzzle run, I this almost feels like a holiday now. It's like, why are you even worried, Doofy? <laughs> Uh, I think I know single-celled organisms that could finish Table Mountain with the items that I have right now. In fact, I know a single one. Her name is Pam. She's a paramecium. We've been dating for three weeks now. 
<laughs> she lives in my lower intestinal tract. All right, all right. I'm sorry, uh, but yeah, this this run and these with these items, I it's just I'm afraid it's too easy, even for me, and I'm pretty lazy. <laughs> oh, I forgot to ask. Uh, what did you guys think of that deep scroll cave run? It's pretty boring, honestly, if you're not playing because there's a lot of like pausing to do purse rummaging for uh, traps and stuff. Hey, a rice ball. No, I don't really need it at this point. Do I go for the loot or do I just end this? I'm just going to end this. This is so easy. It's kind of disappointing. <laughs> uh, I actually continued that recording session and I got fairly deep. I'm not going to spoil it, but uh, yeah, if you want to, I think I'll just update or upload those extra episodes in Deep in Scroll Cave as special side episodes if I don't have anything else planned. So I actually had a lot of fun in Scroll Cave. I was surprised. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Dragon. Thank you for a farewell toast. And thank you too, Snot Piggy. You totally rock, man. <laughs> Back in Golden City. Oh, hey. All right, so it's important to talk to the Foreign Wanderer after you beat the game because that'll trigger this cutscene after you get to the Golden City. She'll unlock yet another bonus stage, a new one for the remake. This will probably be the first bonus dungeon I'm planning on doing after I beat Phase Final Puzzle. Because it's a very long bonus dungeon. Uh, just kind of adds on some additional floors to Table Mountain. All the way to 99. But Tainted Path is not very difficult. I think it's probably the easiest one, actually. Uh, the easiest one other than Bufu and Scroll. So yeah, I'll probably do that one with all the equipment I get for my phase final puzzle run. And then by the time I finished with Tainted Path, my equipment will be good enough to do the other bonus dungeons fairly easily. I'm just going to run through them. However, you can, if you want to, uh, come to Tainted Path just as kind of a regular run. You know, like start out in Phase Final Puzzle in a naked run like I just did. I'm not going to do it now because uh, I kind of just want to unlock the Scroll of Destruction <laughs> rather than die immediately. But if you get fairly lucky with items, usually it helps to find a melding jar, at least one in the jar shop. You can sometimes find a melding jar even in the uh, that final town in the waterfall cavern. Uh, if you find at least one melding jar, you can make it pretty far in Tainted Path, just going straight through, not bringing anything. I'm not going to do that because that's kind of one of the last things you usually do. Enjoy the view of the waterfall. <laughs> But I have made it to floor 60, and I know someone that's made it to floor 70, and I know Japanese players who have made it all the way through, of course. Japanese players have done everything in this game. <laughs> but I would love to do that sometime, just go straight through, all the way through Tainted Path. Alright, I finished the run! <laughs> Look at those stats. Level 28, overleveled. Amazing shield, armor plus six, and amazing armband, armband of sight. Ah, oh, doofy. All right, I said I was gonna make a decision after this run was over. Um, hey, six of grandma. <laughs> I have made my decision. I made it a long time ago, actually, probably like halfway through this run. Let me see. Hmm. Maybe I should... Sometimes I just leave items outside on the ground. I like to think of it as like, uh, you know how you go on Craigslist and there's a list of free stuff? I use Craigslist a lot, by the way. In fact, this laptop I'm using to make this recording is from Craigslist. Uh, <laughs> not the best laptop around, but, you know, I usually use Macs and uh, this is the only PC I have, my Craigslist PC laptop. <laughs> it's served me well so far. Uh, so I'm not going to start some kind of flame war. Uh, but I leave stuff on the ground out right here. And then I just leave town and I imagine I like put an ad in Sheeran's version of Craigslist. Like, free staff on the ground in front of the storage house in Canyon Hamlet. And then people come by and pick it up. Oh, I... My imagination is probably a little bit overdeveloped, huh? <laughs> Having conversations with NPCs that just walk in place. 
All right. Um. So let me see. Let me do some purse rummaging here. And tell you about the unfortunate, maybe, or maybe fortunate for you, decision I've made. This run, it accomplished its goal, I think. Oh, I'm gonna have to remember to check for that. So remind me to check to see that we have actually unlocked the scroll of destruction. <laughs> but um, it it just it was too easy. It doesn't it doesn't actually boost my confidence. I guess I could have unequipped the armband of sight, and then it would have been a little more difficult. Which is, if I was a real manly man, I would have done. But I used it, and uh, I got it. I got to do another run real quick. It'll just be like four or five episodes, maybe more. But probably is, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna speed run it or anything because then I'd probably die really quickly. But I just want to make it through Table Mountain one more time, and then I'll feel ready. Cause I am not, I do not feel good about going into Phase Final Puzzle right now. And not only just because this run was so easy, also... <laughs> this is usually where I load up on five slot jars of holding. I think uh, the ones at the top, I think I have like some four slots, so I'll probably have to replace those. Not just because this run was so easy or because I'm having performance anxiety, although those certainly are factors, but also because my birthday is at the end of November. And it would be awesome if the first time I set foot back in Phase Final Puzzle is like my birthday present so please bear with me <laughs> uh it would have been kind of upsetting i'm sure especially to some of you who seem to be really eager for me to get into phase final puzzle which i can understand i'm i'm really looking forward to it also i also realized that this is kind of my favorite time in cheer in the wander just the anticipation of getting into a bonus dungeon it makes me feel the same way as i felt as a kid after I bought a new game at Toys R Us and I couldn't play it yet, we were driving home. I love that sort of torture of anticipation. So that's part of why I'm doing this. <laughs> I thought back and I realized, other than the rescue episode in 26, I haven't set foot in Phase Final Puzzle since 2010. I remember because I, I was looking for the seed of ill luck and I finally found one and I killed myself on purpose so I could get the rescue password for people who needed to finish the adventure log. And then I did another run and I beat Phase Final Puzzle another time, like two times in a row, and I found another seed of Illuck. And I was like, all right, oh, we did it. So this scroll defeats every enemy in the room. <laughs> oh, so... It's nice to unlock that before you go into Phase Final Puzzle, just in case you get really desperate, like in a Great Hall Monster House. Sometimes, you know, confused and sleeping are just a little bit too risky. And you're like, screw it, I'm just gonna destroy everybody. But yeah, when I beat Phase Final Puzzle twice in a row and I had the Seed of Illuck, I had been playing Phase Final Puzzle like daily. And I realized, Doofy, this is enough, you need to retire. This is like slowly taking over your life. <laughs> So uh, I haven't played, I haven't been in Phase Final Puzzle to try to actually beat it in uh, over four years. So it's going to be fun to get back. I'm a little afraid I'm going to get addicted. So I'm going to have to come up with some ground rules to stop myself from playing like that again. Because I, I don't want to start playing this game every day again. I, I just don't have the time. <laughs> but we will go through Table Mountain one final time beginning next episode on Sheer and the Wanderer. I'm sorry, I have to do it. I have to do it. I am so close to being ready, I can taste it, and it's delicious. A doofy, trying 99 floors, will get slammed in the face and trip to the ground. But soon in the end, he'll find the strength to win, the sweat from his pores as he loves those grandmas, will make him glisten and gleam, and with a melding jar and a couple jars of holding, he'll be ready to ID anything. Okay, but you're just being a dick now. That was a dick move.